So my view of what makes um, helpful characteristics for someone who wants to join a community, and I write about this in my book, Finding Community, and I'm not trying to say, I will tell you what is so. This is just my opinion, is that a person coming to community, uh, first of all, what I would hope for them is that they have an attitude that says, I love what you're doing here. How can I help you? Sort of the, how can I help attitude, rather than the, what can you give me? I'm entitled. I want this and this and this and a paid vacation and my own <laughs> hot tub. You know? The attitude of you owe me, which some people do have, doesn't go over real well in community, I have found. So first of all, an attitude of, hello, roll up sleeves, how can I help? Um, another attitude is an attitude of, um, A humility is the word that I think of, although I don't mean like Uriah Heep um, in Dickens, you know. Uh, I don't mean a lack of self-esteem. I don't mean l low personal, um, low confidence. I don't, I just mean a sense of, let me learn your community culture first before I suggest uh, things to change. Let me understand your agreements and abide by them before I make a proposal to change some of them. Let me, and I'm going to quote Stephen Covey who wrote that book, um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, or whatever the title was. One of his seven habits, he says, is good for effective people is, let me seek first to understand before I will seek to be understood. So let me understand your point of view, new community that I'm learning about, before I want you to understand me. That's what I mean by, by um, humility. Uh, at the same time, <laughs> I would want the person entering community to have self-confidence. And those aren't contradictory. Uh, Self-confident meaning I feel trust for the world and myself and for you other people. Uh, there's things that I know that I can do, that I can help. Um, a feeling of I'm, I'm all right, I'm fine as compared to feelings of painful inadequacy or feelings of deep shame or feelings of, I'm no good. That kind of um, inner interior emotional landscape tends to be really hard on the person entering the community. And it tends to be hard on the community itself. This is hard to talk about because it's um, exceedingly politically incorrect. So let's talk about it. Um, somebody who doesn't feel very good about themselves before they're entering the community, and maybe they haven't done any personal healing work before they enter the community door, um, can tend to take offense, be upset, get into conflicts with folks, feel harmed or victimized when in fact they're not to the point where it takes group time and group energy having mediations or whole group conversations dealing with this person's upset feelings. I'm not, I'm not saying I think that people who don't feel too happy aren't good folks. I do think they're good folks. I'm just talking about characteristics that work well in group process. So I would want someone who's having a real hard time in life to get some healing and some help and some self-confidence and some inner emotional strength before doing this thing called living in community. Um, at least that's my personal little bias. I've seen people enter community with an energy that says, oh, I really like what you're doing. How can I help? These are some skills I have. Um, and when somebody asks them to do X or Y or Z, they don't feel like, how dare you ask me to do that? They say, oh, sure. And I think that takes confidence. I want to quote uh, my friend Zev Pace, who's, who is a co-housing co activist who says of co-housing, but I'm going to say it of community in general, ah, oh, community, the longest, most expensive personal growth workshop you will ever take. And so this is fine if you have confidence to take the slings and arrows of outrageous feedback that you might get when you're in community, and you will. And if it just causes you to reel with shock and pain and ah, uh, it might be just too hard for you at that time. Do some inner work and come back. 
Oh, another one, another quality that I would hope people entering community would have, both for their sake and for the community's sake, that they're willing to work, that they have self-discipline, that they're willing to say, here, give me those work gloves. How can I help you carry this load of firewood? Here, give me those rubber gloves. Let me do these dishes. Here, let me cook this meal. You need some child care? Here, let me have some fun reading a story to these kids. Oh, I know how to uh, redesign a whole and complete solar system. Here, give me those pliers. I'll work on your solar system. People who have an energy for working and contributing. Here's another quality that I would hope people entering community have. Uh, a sense of responsibility. Or to put it in blatant terms, they're a grown-up. That is to say, they pay their bills. When they say they'll do something, they will do something. When they agree to abide by the agreements that the community has, they do abide by them. They don't play their music really loud after the quiet hour time, which might be 10 o'clock or something. They don't park there where we don't park. They, they curb their kids, cats, dogs, uh, or their behavior. <laughs> they, they learn to live within the group's agreed upon framework of agreements. If there are dues and fees, they pay them. If there is work requirements, they show up cheerful, they do the work. As compared to people who might be resisting, paying, working, following agreements, who might have just a little bit of entitlement energy, like, you know, I shouldn't have to do that, that shouldn't have to apply to me. That kind of energy does not work well for the person or for the community. So I'm looking for responsibility, ability to work, self-confidence, humility, what are your agreements, I'll follow them, and willingness to contribute.